Hi, and welcome to this next Trello training video in my series. First, I want to take a moment to thank all of you who have watched the first Trello training video I created. The feedback publicly and privately has been great, and I'm really glad so many of you found it helpful. If you've not seen that video, I'm going to provide the link below, and it, it's probably going to be valuable for you to watch that video first if you're new to Trello, and then watch this video. In this video, I'm going to specifically cover a number of changes that Trello has made to the user experience, which kind of trump the first video, and there have been some great updates, and what I'm going to do is go through those. And in each case where there's been an enhancement, what I'll do is I'll show a screenshot and cover the way things used to look, and then we'll take a look at how things look today in the new Trello. First, we'll start with the upper left-hand corner navigation uh, via the board name. So in the past, if you clicked on the board name in the upper left-hand corner, and this board that we're looking at is similar to a demo that I did in the first video, when you clicked on the board name, you had a ton of options, from settings, members, tons of configurable board-related items that were on the left-hand side. In the updated Trello, the only thing that happens now when you click on board is that you get to rename the board. That's it. So if you're looking for all those settings, they've been relocated. We'll talk about those in, the, in just a second. The next thing to take a look at is the concept of the sidebar. So in the old Trello, the sidebar, which is far off on the right-hand side, had a number of different things that you could do with options and adding lists, and we'll hit on some of those items. But if you wanted to open and close that sidebar, it wasn't incredibly intuitive to know how to do that. I mean, there, there is a small icon that's available that you can click on to open or close, but it just wasn't very intuitive. So in the updated Trello, they added this show sidebar button at the top, or just a text. And if you click on it, it opens up the sidebar item on the right-hand side. Uh, very easy to access, and if you want to close it, you can just click on this um, button again, and it closes it out. So I think that's way more intuitive than the old method, so I think that was a great enhancement. Next thing we'll take a look at is the refinements to adding new lists. In the old Trello, if you wanted to add a new list, you would do that on the far right-hand side sidebar. There was an option there to just click on Add List, and you could do that, and that worked perfectly fine. Um, but there are some new methods to do that here, and so one of the things that you'll notice in, in the new Trello is that there's a list like a, a list on standby on the right-hand side of all of your different lists called Add a List, and all you have to do is click on that and you can create a list. So that's, uh, that's a really easy way. So there is another way that I'll tell you, I'm not sure if it was there before or not, and it's not something I covered in the first video, but you can also create a board by double-clicking in different open um, blank spaces around lists. So if you double click near the first list, it gives you the ability to add a list in the first position. If I double click near the third um, section, it gives me an option to put it in the fourth position. And, and you'll find that if you do it farther to the left hand side, it lets you do it in the third position. If it's farther to the right, it will do it in the fourth position. So that is a really nice enhancement in terms of how you can add lists. So those are two methods. You can either use the far, um, uh, you can either use the method of adding list here, or you can use the double click method. I think both uh, are great and a lot easier than working with the sidebar because you don't have to bother opening the sidebar. Next, we'll take a look at the enhancements to labels. To access labels in the past, and when I say access labels, we're talking about setting up the naming conventions used for labels. To do that in the past, you would open up the board configuration on the left-hand side, you'd click on labels, and you'd get the option for setting up all the labels. Well, that's now been relocated into the settings. So if we open the sidebar here, and then there's this menu section, and if we expand that, you'll see that there's an option uh, uh, under settings and then all the way at the bottom you'll see edit labels so this is the new place now where you can edit the labels that you want to work with inside Trello so this is a great way to do it and I think it's uh, it was a smart move of Trello to consolidate all this information in one place you just have to remember that labels are part of individual settings that you need to drill into so easy enough and I think that's a smart change Next thing we'll do is take a look at filters. And the old way of working with filters is by um, working on the upper left-hand uh, nav section. And there was a way to um, 
I'm sorry, the upper, the right hand sidebar, there was a way to filter cards in there and you can see it's indicated under the board section under options and add list. You could filter cards there and uh, that was easy enough and the only thing that's changed now is that now it's just under, if you open the sidebar, you'll see it under menu and filter cards is available and the functionality basically works the same way but uh, it's now available uh, in just a different section on the far right hand side sidebar. The next thing we'll take a look at, and this is something I didn't really cover a ton in the first video, is archiving. And archiving is Trello's way to delete lists, boards, and cards, but retain the ability to restore them. So you can archive all those items and bring them back and restore them. But you can't do that with tasks. So tasks is the one exception to something you can't archive. So here's how archiving works. You can do it a couple different ways. So I'm gonna show some of the old ways and the new ways. Um, one of the ways is to just click on a card and then when the properties, uh, the card comes up, all you have to do is to click on archive and it vanishes from your list and goes into the archive list. That's one way to do it. A second way to do it is by clicking on the drop down for the card and you can archive it this way. And if I click on that, you can see that it also disappears in its archive. Um, the new ways to do it are to click and drag and you'll notice at the top of the screen I can now drop here to archive a card and so that's something that's new and if you do that by accident you can just uh, you can view your archive if you want to see what it looks like and pull that back out. There's another way and that's if we go into uh, the archived items uh, by clicking on menu and in archived items in the sidebar you can also take items and drag them to the, the sidebar and archive it that way. And to retain or to restore items, you can go into the uh, archive section and then you can also drag them back out or you can click on send it to the board and that will also bring all those archived items back onto your board for you. So the new item here that is most noticeable is that when you click, you can just bring things down to the bottom. I mean, there really are uh, a ton of options here in terms of the way that you do it. None of them are any better than the other. They're just all good options. The next thing that we'll take a look at is the um, board subscription section. In the past if you wanted to subscribe to a board you'd click on the name of the board in the upper left hand corner and then you'd click on subscribe. Now that section has been moved and now that's been located in the sidebar. So if you click on the sidebar at the top level you can now click on subscribe and once you've done that if you click on subscribe you'll notice that uh, you'll see this icon right here with the eyeball and showing subscribed uh, in the old Trello the subs subscribe was located in a different section. Still easy to find it, but uh, just a different area. Next thing we'll talk about is the status up the status section re related to who's logged in and who's currently using Trello as well as what type of status they have. So in the old Trello, if you looked at a particular list, you could see uh, a particular uh, users, uh, members that were part of a board, you could see if they were um, if they were you know, just uh, admin or not. If it was a blue icon, you knew they were an admin, but you really didn't have good visibility in terms of is that person online, uh, are and and having it easily available. There just it wasn't. There was just some limitations in terms of what you could view and not view associated with members. So now in the new Trello, one of the things that you'll see is uh, related to all the members that are part of a particular board. I'm just going to go up and collapse the menu here, but you can see that I have info share who is a, an administrator of the board and that's that's the new icon that you can see for an administrator. And then you can also see this green indicator showing that uh, I'm active. And then for Jimmy Hendricks, who we used in the first video, he has a yellow icon right now, and the yellow just means that he's idle. So Jimmy's logged into Trello, he's on the system, he's just not actively using it. And as soon as his mouse moves, it will turn to green. And you can see that type of activity status in the cards as well as on the member section on the far right hand side. So that's a new way of finding, so with these new icons you can find out if someone's idle, online, disconnected, and if they're disconnected there's just no color. And you can also see through a new icon if someone's an administrator. So those are the new settings there. Um, you know, the final thing that I wanted to show you and something that I didn't talk about in the first video is just a, an easy way to get back and forth between the boards. If you have a lot of boards on your screen, you may not like kind of scrolling back and forth like this using the scroll bar at the bottom. There is a way where if you click your mouse and hold in a blue area, 
you can scroll back and forth using that method. Yeah, I think that's a, you know, I don't talk about a lot of shortcuts here in terms of key um, strokes, but, uh, and I focused a lot on the mouse movement and the, uh, and the interactivity with a mouse, but this is a really good way to interact with the Trello system. And, and if you have a lot of Trello boards, it, it really is kind of a pain to have to go back and forth between a lot of boards. And even if you've got the sidebar hidden, and, and even if, as you add more boards, the, the, the list, the size of the list collapse, it's still a bit of a pain to have to worry about moving back and forth with the scroll bar at the bottom. And so I just want to let you know that there is that ability where you can click and hold the mouse and scroll back and forth. So that's just a quick take of the new functionality inside of the updated Trello. I think they're all great ads and I think you know, a bit confusing in terms of knowing how most of the items that were located up here off of the board menu have been relocated over to the sidebar. I think that's the biggest adjustment that you'll have to make. Other than that, I think the functionality that they built in is much more intuitive and probably based on a lot of feedback from a lot of users and so I was glad to see those changes. So if you have any feedback for me, any suggestions that you have for anyone who's using Trello, please put those on the video below. If you like this video, please give it a like and keep watching. I'm looking to do another video on organizations and how those work uh, in the next couple months. So look for that. In the meantime, uh, enjoy using Trello. Thanks.